vulnerable, uh, vulnerable groups, journalists who uh, encounter hate speech, online harassment, all over the world. We, we want to highlight also the protection of female journalists and, and minority groups. It is also great responsibility for us all. And supporting the civil society and its actors, civil, civil society networks and NGOs, and do great cooperation in this work with them. To conclude, it is important to state that freedom of expression and media freedom of human rights, they include the right for, to information, freedom to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through the, any media regardless of frontiers. And Finland, which now holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union, is highlighting these issues also during the presidency. Uh, we are looking forward to cooperating with other states on multilateral platforms within these issues. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, State Secretary. And uh, finally, from the panel, um, I have uh, Emina Jabarova, also has been a journalist in her past, uh, but is now Minister for Information uh, and Presidential Spokesperson for the Ukraine. Yeah. The floor is yours. I'm not the presidential spokesperson, just the first deputy minister for information uh. policy. Uh, they have already started to calculate my time, so I have to go <laughs> to my speech because it's only three minutes. I will have to read, dear excellences, ladies and gentlemen, my country is under the war for five years and under the occupation. So my national statement will directly go to this very problematic issue and my pain, not only personal, but in terms of the whole uh, state. Ukraine commits to and protects freedom of speech as one of the key prerequisites for the existence of democratic society. Ukraine adheres to its international obligations, among which are the media independence from the state censorship. And we have managed to establish an independent public broadcasting in Europe, Ukraine, where the state finances but does not interfere the editorial policy. Having mentioned that, the most pressing challenge being currently faced by Ukraine is a complete lack of freedom of speech on its temporarily occupied territories. The national broadcasting system has been completely shut down in the autonomous Republic of Crimea and the city of Sevastopol and parts of, parts of Donetsk and Luhansk region, which is on the east of my country. Another broadcasting system, an illegal one, has been set up instead. In Crimea alone, Russia illegally exploits 500 television and radio frequencies that belong to Ukraine. Ukrainian online media outlets are blocked out. The signal of Ukrainian broadcasters from the Ukrainian controlled territories are suppressed and jammed by the occupying power. The import of Ukrainian newspapers and magazines is banned and an all out censorship is in place. Political persecutions, searches and attacks on journalists and news officers, imprisonment and tortures, partial tribunals and groundless sentences for political activism, they all have led to the complete disappearance of freedom of speech and expression. The world will recall the most prominent journalists who are sentenced, like Mikola Simina, Stanislav Asseyev, Roman Sushenka, and all others do, uh, that, that are imprisoned and sentenced. Dozens of news media have been forced out or have ceased to exist. Some of them, including Crimean Tata TV channel ATR, are now operating in Kiev and have been financially supported by the state despite of the private ownership. With the foregoing in view, Ukraine continues to build up necessary infrastructure, creating an information alternative in the occupied territories. This includes the setup of the new TV towers and the allocation of new radio and television frequencies so that the residents of the occupied territories could have access to any kind of alternative but for Russian media. Therefore, Ukraine calls upon the international community to take a more proactive stance with respect to the protection of freedom of speech in Ukraine's occupied territories. And we really welcome the launch of the Media Freedom Contact Group that has been announced here today. The attention drawn to the consequences of occupation regarding the curtailment of all freedoms in Crimea and Donbas will serve the cause of democracy and freedom all over the world. Thank you. Sahomas. Thank you so much. That was really powerful from uh, really where the front line is in terms of uh, getting uh, accurate information to citizens. So thank you for that very powerful statement. We now have five minutes where we can uh, invite uh, members of the audience to ask questions. I'm looking uh, from right to left to see if I see any hands 
up at all. Uh, any questions from the floor or uh, can I just uh, bring this session to a close then by saying uh, that I think we heard a uh, really broad range of contributions, uh, some real progress uh, being made in some very powerful national statements and we are proud to be hosting this conference with Canada where we can stand united in defending media freedom across our world. Thank you very much for taking part in this panel. Thank you.